I'm grateful for the culture of KWPR. Awesome. Yeah, we've heard that a few times. That's great. So the next thing is the Spirit Award. And I think Tammy is on vacation. She won it last time. So she's going to have Melissa give this off. Yeah. Yeah, well, I remember another Melissa oftentimes saying, for those of you that are show you my beautiful brand new trophy <laughs> that I picked up at like some sort of, you know, secondhand store, to make it Garage particularly sale. goofy and funny and um, reflective of the culture that we have here, which is playful and fun and spirited. And Tammy celebrated her 50th birthday in Mexico, so she let me keep this in my office. I've not received the Spirit Award, but I'm just going to pretend like I did. <laughs> and on behalf of her, she would like to nominate this person who has been in real estate for one year. They have given up their full-time employment recently to make a full go of this real estate career. Despite having some extremely difficult transactions with very challenging obstacles, this agent has really risen to the occasion to tackle the roadblocks head on. They have shown perseverance and given outstanding service to their clients. Today, this Spirit Award goes to Ryan Ring. Yeah. Ryan, you are an amazing agent and a great asset to your clients and your family who you're spending a little bit of time with over this week and the next week. As well. So, show him some love. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah. So, we have one new agent to welcome. Um, Justin, there you are. <laughs> then we have a lot of anniversaries, as you can tell. We've got Krista, Taylor, Corey, Cheryl, Cole, Dean, Shannon, Aaron, Aubrey. Jimmy, Ronnie, and Tammy. I think we have some more, right? Yep. Elson, Jeffrey, Thomas, Peter, Sarah, Lisa, Ryan, Trisha. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> and obviously, the greatest thing that happens at KW is when you cap, you get 100% of your commission. So. We want to congratulate Ryan on that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, I won't throw some pictures up there. Um, and I, I, I learned today, today I learned, if you've ever been there, black text is terrible. So it doesn't work on this screen. But I did want to point out on Thursdays uh, going forward, I'll be having tech classes at 1 p.m. They are designed as a workshop primarily. They will be available on Zoom, but they are designed for in-person because I want to work with you and do the thing that we are talking about not just talk about it not just think about it but to actually do the thing and so uh on this next thursday which is tomorrow we'll be talking about three secrets of command it is a class that i took at family reunion and i will literally be delivering the very class to you that i took with some additional enhancements here for you so like that's pictures? cool um, I will bring some pictures. What kind of pictures do you want? Bananas? <laughs> well, yeah, well, it, it, Purdue, keep that in mind. They're, they're still winning. And uh, next week, uh, it'll be 36 touch campaigns and you. When I talk about 36 touch campaigns, we all talk about 36 touch campaigns, but I want to talk about how do you bring yourself into the 36 touch campaign, making sure that you are present in it. Because when you're passionate about it and it reveals something about you to your customers, and your clients, then you are more likely to stay with it. So those are two things. When we talk about three secrets of command, let me be that. That's a very that is a basic class. We're going to talk about um, the simple stuff like database cleaning. We're going to talk about how to clean the database, how to do it quickly and efficiently if you're using command, uh, and then some very basic sorts of smart plans and things like that to get it up and rolling. So that'll be tomorrow, and then uh, a week from that we'll be doing 36 Touch. Also. When you're in the Facebook group, our Facebook group, if there's an event going on now, I post that in events. So if you ever want to look, you hit the event button in our group, and you'll see a list of all the upcoming things, not just mine, but anything else that's going on as well. And that'll be a great place for you to kind of take a look at times and things like that so you can see it there. Additionally, 
ever have questions, awpr-dashboard.com is there available to you as well. There's a lot of great links on there if you're not familiar with that particular place. Now, I'm going to bring up my buddy. We oh, call him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You see, you know, a very recent picture. Yeah. <laughs> so but my friend Matt and I, we're going to talk about making commission amazing, mm. right? Making commission amazing. Now, you're thinking to yourself, I thought he was the MCA, and that meant something completely different. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you the MCA is making commission amazing That's with good. Matthew, <laughs> Matthew, no, and his puppy. And his puppy. Yeah. That's my old dog, Sydney. <laughs> who died 28 years ago or so, <laughs> <laughs> so yes. while we're making commission amazing one thing i want to point out is if you guys don't know and if you're a newer agent you really don't know this but the first several days of the month are a thing called transmittal it's kind of crazy it's very labor intensive requires a lot of like brain and thank goodness i'm not involved but matthew is involved in that and so the first few days of the month he's busy working on that so he's taking some time out of that to come out and talk today about some issues and how we can make sure that you get paid the right way on time. It's a fairly timely thing because I actually ran into this again this morning. I have a check I'm trying to process a commission for. I cannot find the opportunity in command. Um, so when you're in opportunities, you've all been there in command. <laughs> you all want to get paid. You'll see that sometimes you have a, a, an opportunity under somebody's name, like Fred Flintstone. He's your buyer, cool man, I haven't made any offers, I don't know what the property is, so I create the opportunity with the name of the client, right? Fred Flintstone, he's a cool guy, he's buying houses. Bam, that happens, John. But, <coughs> you make an offer on a house, it's been accepted. That's when you would want to put the property address in there. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to find, because a lot of times, even the check uh, won't have the buyer's name on it. I'll have to dig through the alt and sometimes it's under the husband's name or the wife's name and we've got it, a different name and, and the opportunity. So once there is an address associated with the buyer, if you put in the address, that makes finding the opportunity a lot easier. It makes me getting you paid a lot easier as well. Hey, you're not as pretty as Bama though. I'm trying, I'm trying to, sorry. So when you do that, see, you change the address, and then it says you move into 1313 Cobblestone Way. Now you're asking yourself, 1313 Cobblestone Way, where have I heard of that before? And the answer is, it was on the Flintstones. That is one of the three <laughs> addresses Fred had. So he is literally moving to the right place, and yes, Wilma's with him. He didn't cheat her out of the process either. We're in there. But make sure that once you make an offer on that property and it's accepted, Okay, that's when you go in there, you hit that pencil and edit the opportunity to include the address. Because both the front desk and Matt reference it that way to find the thing. It's unfortunate <coughs> the fact of the way the systems that we have all marry together. But by putting that property address in there, that makes everything go super smooth and make sure you get paid on time. And then if your own records, it's important to keep the buyer name in there, just add it to me. That way you're good to go. And that way, Matt can help you make commission amazing. <laughs> MCA. Yeah. MCA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so so coming soon. Coming soon. Who's ever heard of coming soon? <laughs> so probably better if, if you're in the room if you want to talk about coming soon, Dean, Scotty. Lisa, Zach, who you want to talk about? Uh, what do we got there? Red sites. Yep. Uh, going active Friday. For some reason, they only wanted two hours worth of showings on Friday, so there's like 22 showings in a two hour stretch. Oh, 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 so I'm living up there with like road flares and like <laughs> uh, But great location, privacy behind, two story. Um, Prices, I think a rock star price. Uh, the other one is uh, more like a month out in Bloomfield, neighborhood of Rosemount, big two story. Uh, it'll probably be listed more like about 485 ish, but um, freshly finished basement, new roof, new furnace. Oh, 
How many want to talk about yours? Um, how many people have people dying to get into Big Lake? <laughs> three bedroom, three bedroom. No, three bedroom, three bath. It's like new construction. It'll go on sometime next week. How big is the lake? It's pretty nice. It's lake. not on big lake. Super small. Small big lake. Small big lake. It's a nice city. Not a lot. Lisa and I would like to talk about ours. Yes. So we have a uh, rare um, opportunity <laughs> in Prior Lake. It's a large palace feeling rambler um, the bones are outstanding nice finishes in it five bedrooms uh four finished basement walkout it is on 10 acres Ooh. so wow. you know it's a great opportunity either just for you know families that are just dreaming of having that in prior lake close to everything but there's always the possibility to look into splitting up the 10 acres it also has a pole barn, and which pole is barn, rare yeah. too, and it is a nice one. What's the price? I can't see that. There. Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, nine hundred and forty thousand. If they, it's in a withheld status to give everyone here a first chance. If they could get nine hundred and forty thousand without a bidding war first, they would sell. Okay. So you guys have. Um, I put the date of the three dates that we're changing our statuses up there on both sides, so you can kind of see how much time you have to get the word out because this is rare. Did you confirm it's subdivided? Yes-ish. Yes-ish. Did you guys say it was on Friday or just in Friday? No, it's off of 190th Street, but it's like close to everything, yet you're in the country. Oh, and then an interesting thing, they have invisible fencing for their dog. It's like the $10 million dog on eight acres of the property. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Olivia will buy it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bird calling for their dogs. We'll throw the dog in. Any pro tenant, one for each acre? Yeah. <laughs> then I'll buy it. I'll, I'll take the dog. You can She'll have rent it out. <laughs> I have the one in Bell Plain. It's coming active tomorrow or Friday. Uh, really solid three bed, two bath rambler. Uh, basement's partially finished with a non conforming fourth bed. Um, a lot of the rooms have been newly painted, attached garage, which you don't see a lot in this area. So, stick to people. That's nice. Awesome. 245. It's on the top line. Yes. Can I add one? Yeah, absolutely. I have a, um, a quad town home. They want to do off market uh, in Chanhassen. It's a two bed, two bath. Um, the highest comp we found was a 290 comp. So they kind of want to get as close to that as possible, but they prefer to do it off market. Chanhassen, kind of right behind that. Who's got a buyer? Off market property? Are yeah, you kidding? Yeah, there you go. Scoop it up. <laughs> they want to do off market. Scoop it up. Yeah. Kind of updates. Good job. What kind of updates does it have? Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I can send you. I don't know who said that, but I can. Uh, John. I can give you the address after and. Okay. It sold a year ago. Got so. It. So it's pretty. It's pretty comparable to the Or you can just plug it in the sheet. Yeah. Yeah, I'll yes. plug it in. I'll plug it in. <laughs> Any other updates? Anybody got anything else? Come on. We'll make sure that gets on there too. So save the date. You guys should have already seen this on Facebook and some other places. The award ceremony is going to be the 30th. There is a sign up that I'll pass around. I know some people have already signed up, but make sure that gets passed around so we can kind of have some. I also want to touch on that. If you're out of if you're out of the, the Twin Cities market, we're going to be making sure that we have Victoria and I are working on a program of things, so if you're driving in from out of state on that day after that, we're going to try and put some things together for you, uh, and details are coming, but we're going to try and do stuff on that date so we can make it a nice big day for you and have all kinds of, of stuff to help those people who are maybe out of market. You can always get the services here in, in the office, but you know, those folks try to do something extra for them. What's the time? Sorry. 10.30. Yeah, 10.30. At the Best Western that's close by. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> the day, May 12th. 
save that day too. It helps to give back to the community. And Can you still explain what that is for anybody that doesn't know? Okay. It's a national holiday with Keller Williams Realty International in honor of Mo Anderson, former CEO. She's 84 years old. She's known as the culture queen. And so all KW offices worldwide, we're in over 50 countries. Uh, we essentially do what we can to shut down the office and go give back to the community that day. Um, so if you have suggestions, we have a few things lined up already. Christina Meyer, thank you for emailing me. Your suggestions, Chris, or, uh, Jessica and Megan, and I think a few other people are working on some of the details, uh, but we, we need, we'd like to get 100 people involved uh, from the office, so we would ask you to put that on your calendar and join us with whatever we end up doing. We just don't have the details set. We, we've got a couple, a couple months here. So. Yeah. Thank you. So we kind of touched on this a little bit at our last team meeting. Jason did a great job of going over remind, but we are going to have I think it's an hour and a half isn't it? Uh, session coming up here on the 10th. So oh, we have a sign up meeting or not? Uh, it's a Zoom. But we will also have it on here in the training room too. So one we'll hour have a snack cart. Ten to what? I think it's an hour and a half, but isn't that the one that's being taught by the folks out yeah. east? Yeah. That's what time on that. You said an hour and a half. Yeah. So it's 10, what time? Oh, okay. 10 a.m. 10 to 11 30. Yeah. So I would like to add something to that. So I'm compiling a list of questions. So if you want to know more about something, <clears throat> send it my way and then we'll submit it to Revive to Who make sure you? it's touched upon. Today I am Jason Oliver. Okay, I'll be today. <laughs> Jason Oliver. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know. So this is going to be taught by someone from Remind. This is them coming up and talking about how to use this great tool as a part of the new MLS system. So we have another, I know we had a CE class in here before, but we have another opportunity coming up on 17, right here in the training room again at one o'clock. And there is a cost, right? Is it if, if you just want to attend the class, the class is free. If you would like CE credits, 3.75 credits, it's $20, which is a really good deal. Pretty good. And you do need to sign up for that one. So there's okay. a, so there should be a code. Thank you. If we've already commented on the Facebook post, should we still sign up? I, I would. I've tried to keep current on that, but okay. if you're not on that list, please. You probably Thank actually, you. you, I think, actually are on that list, but if you get a reason. Other events going on, uh, SHIP training workshop, uh, the Remind was already on there, the CE credit, uh, then obviously the award ceremony again. That SHIP training workshop is through uh, Keller Williams, and that will be on the Connect website. Um, so if you're interested in that, you want to follow the Connect links that are in the Facebook post. Next is our wonderful broker, Melissa. Whoop, whoop. I requested to go early rather than late because you guys get to hear some ideas that we took away from family reunion, but I didn't want my idea to be stolen, so I wanted to go first. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you just threw your idea on oh, the floor. This, this is how I, this is how I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. Um, you guys have seen on the Facebook page, and you will hear a lot today about the keynote speaker, my new favorite person, Sean Aker, and you'll hear more about him later, I'm sure, but the number one takeaway that I took away from his keynote speech at Family Reunion was this concept of having shared community and how Damn life it. is a lot easier. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> how life is a lot easier when you surround yourself with people that are like-minded. And the analogy that he gave, he said, do you ever go out for a walk or a run and you get to that point where you know you're going to go up the hill and you're like, oh, the hill, the hill, the hill, the hill stinks. But if you go out for a walk with a friend and you're walking and talking and you get to the hill and you're like, oh, Oh, we just made it to the top of the hill. Like I didn't even notice that I was on the hill. <clears throat> the reason that matters to you guys today, and my very interesting topic of conversation about you know insurance is, you guys didn't join. <laughs> See the connection? <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> you guys did not 
joined Keller Williams Preferred Realty because you wanted to do this on your own. You joined Keller Williams Preferred Realty because you knew that we had 200 realtors, that we sell 2,000 houses, that we are just in ourselves a mastermind of collaboration and creativity and helpfulness. So with all the good things that happen at Keller Williams Preferred Realty, occasionally you guys are gonna come upon some things that are actually really big challenges. They're really difficult, they're really hard. And the very first thing you need to do is envision Melissa Johnson, your broker, walking up that hill with you. If something goes wrong, call me. Stop into my office, text me, be there with me. Don't try to figure it out on your own. Because as it turns out with errors and emissions insurance, if you don't follow the process, errors and emissions insurance doesn't apply to you. And that would be a real big problem. Because as you guys know, every month you pay a fee to your errors and emissions insurance. And just like with your car, for example, you probably have, let's just say, Colin Hopper Insurance Agency as your insurance agent then you get your car insurance through Progressive Insurance, correct? Following me? So if something goes wrong, um, we have a, a real estate, or we have an insurance broker called the Real Estate Insurance Solutions Company. They're actually in Utah, and they will then have us file a claim with General Star Insurance. So some things that have happened recently are things that are related to code of ethics, things that are related to the Department of Commerce. And I wanna make sure that if something like that happens with you, if someone comes to you and says, I need to file a complaint or if a complaint has been filed against you, or perhaps even someone threatens a lawsuit, you need to understand the process that you take and exactly what errors and emissions insurance is. Go ahead to the next slide. It's been asked a lot of us, um, what's covered by my errors, errors and emissions insurance? And fortunately for you, they're zero deductible. If you have a claim made against you for disciplinary or regulatory complaints, network or security incidents, like we talked about last time, if someone is logging in to your command or into your MLS, and also any professional reputation protection. However, there is a deductible for other things that might come up, say, for instance, something happens at an open house. Someone mistreats or um, uses your lockbox when they shouldn't. If there's been bodily injury or property damage, a fair housing complaint, environmental concerns such as mold or fungus. It's a $2,500 deductible. So what would happen then is you notify me, I notify the insurance company, the insurance company then assigns it to an attorney and the attorney would represent us. Don't go out finding your own attorney. They would represent us and we would work through that problem with you. They would um, cover your insurance um, actually up to a million dollars in some incidences, not in all, some of them are lower, like $25,000. The errors and emissions is there for you to help you, and we are here as your leadership team to help you work through those problems should they arise. Any questions? All right, let's walk awesome. up that hill together. Thank you. Thank you. Productivity coaching. Okay, you guys. I'm all about competitions, and Tasha helped me out with this one. So, what is what is 360 communities? Do you know? Uh, it's a bunch of communities. 360 communities. Tasha, what is 360 communities? Thank you. They are our local emergency help for domestic abuse shelters, sexual assault. Uh, Workers in the police stations, they have um, shelters, they have the food shelves, and they do other services like maybe your gas or electric is going to get turned off. They will help you. And they have all kinds of in school programs as Yay. well. They are wonderful. They are amazing. And uh, Tasha and I were at a coffee break for the Chamber of Commerce, and um, they have a goal of helping raise $150,000 in the month of March and raising, raising, well, getting 150,000 pounds of food, right? So Tasha and I look at each other and she's like, we need to make this competition with another real estate program. Ooh. I was like, three max and Apple Valley. Yeah. They're going down. <laughs> and it was super exciting because I showed up at this next event the same day and I was like, hey, Lori, um, I just have a surprise for you. And she's sitting next to Lori, who's in charge of 360s. And I was like, I um, volunteered you to have a competition with us. And the other Lori's like, you didn't even tell her? I was like, nope. And she's like, oh, I had a goal 
of being in the office more this year, so I, I guess I'll accept. I'm like, <laughs> so the deal is, is we need to be there. Okay, so yeah. we need to get as much food and as much money as possible. And one of the really cool things you can do because it's starting to warm up in March is you can do a food drive where you drop off information and then you go another day and pick it up. And it's like door knocking, right? But you don't even have to knock on the door. You can just mail out the thing or you can drop it off. So are you guys- With the QR you? code! <laughs> do you see the QR code? Right? <laughs> So there's there's a list of things I'm gonna I'm gonna post all this stuff um, and then we'll have the box and we're gonna fill it up like 700 times so no worries there and who's in with me to do this yeah. I have a suggestion okay let's hear um I'll donate 50 bucks and anybody else in the room wants to donate 50 bucks right now raise your hand we'll jot down all your names we'll give you the 50 dollars Jessica you go buy all the food and you make sure we win yay <laughs> we're totally so winning. Yeah. Right. So, I have a Tasha, Hoffmeisters, yeah. Christina Meyer. So they do better with Jean. money. They can buy four no, one. Oh, we can buy. Yeah. Somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna get all those names okay. over here. Wow, Janet just gave a hundred. Wow. I don't have to do anything. Can you help grab some of these names? Sure. Maybe on the right side of the room, and I'll start over there. Megan. Just take a couple pictures. Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe you can hold your hand up long enough. Yeah. I'll do fifty dollars. Oh, we're not doing that. Okay, okay. Oh my god. Here we go. Here we go. I already got a hundred. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's like so, the cool thing is that this is who we're going to be working with for right. amazing. Good job, everybody. Uh, and okay. we would have had a better shot of beating Apple Valley if you hadn't plug for growth coaching. Um, I think it was November or early December, we shifted the way growth coaching was done. And instead of making it a program that you were paying for, we made it something that was open to anybody Wednesdays at two to join us for conversation. And I have been real sad on Wednesdays. I've been thrilled to see a couple of people that have been my kind of constant Wednesday companions, but we would really love to have a much larger group so we can do more masterminding. We can grow and share and learn together. We did this for you guys. So we really would love for you to be there. If you are an agent that has graduated through PC and you are looking to grow, you're looking to get more listings, you're looking to start a team, you're looking to take your business to the next level, you should be here in this room or on Zoom Wednesdays at two. There's really no reason that you're not here. So this Wednesday, right? Today. Yeah, it's today. Today. Another day. We'll be here today and we would love for you to join us. Does anybody have questions about growth coaching? There has been a little bit of a, a glitch with the Zoom link. I will always be putting the Zoom link in the Facebook group. I know that that's not necessarily best for everybody. So if you can't get on, um, just reach out to me. You can text me and um, I'll make sure that you get the correct link. But we've had a, a few times when I think that the office link is being used and so then we get kicked off in growth coaching. So did we get that figured out? Or are we using mine? It's, I think it's fine today. 
It will be fine today. <laughs> is, that, is that structured or when we come, is it kind of a topic based on what everybody says? Is there something? So I always started with what, what is, what do you want to talk about? I always have a topic or two that I'm going to bring up. So for instance, today, we're going to go over some of my ahas from family reunion. Um, obviously, we're going to cover that in here as well, but we'll have an hour to take a deeper dive this afternoon. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Are they recorded? No. So I think it's important that people are here for the discussion, but it is on Zoom. If you're not in the office, join us on Zoom. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah. Thank you. Oh, so we have some updates coming. So. Olivia wanted to come up and kind of talk about. Are you guys scared to find a picture of me from when I was a kid or what? I asked if anyone would be scared of that. Talk to me. Talk to me. Okay. Well, you are in the well dear, dear God, I was a little worried about what I'd see. We did go somewhere else, but she wouldn't give them. To us. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> but now we know where we're at. But I'll have to get you an update. I'll have to get you an update one because that's about 40 pounds heavier than I am now. So I can get you a new one. Uh, so a couple of things just coming down the pipeline that I want to talk to you guys about quick. Um, we're working on solutions as fast as we can for um, yeah, transaction coordination evenings and weekends. So we should have a solution here wrapped up in a couple of weeks. So thank you for your patience on that. Um, as soon as I'm back from vacation, I'll be starting to interview and looking to hire a marketing coordinator for the office. They will also be doing social media as well. Uh, still working through some of the details on that. More than likely, it'll be an a la carte option for you. So if you want to turn over everything that you need for a new listing, you can hire that person to do it. Um, so it'll kind of be a plug and play. If you want them to build out your My Google business page, if you want them to run your social media, if you want them to do your 36 touch, we're going to have a just a menu of options for you. So if you have any referrals, thank you for the woohoo. If you have any referrals, send them my way. Um, so I'll start the interview process at the end of March for that. Uh, the other thing that we're going to be working on probably the beginning of the second quarter is a leads program where we're going to kick off providing leads through the market center where uh, for those of you that want to participate in that there will be kind of a, an expectation a boot camp that you'll have to work through script practice that you'll have to be a part of um, and it'll be a commission share on those leads but it's another way where we can provide value to you um, on top of the leads from your own database so that's coming down the pipeline as well um, we will be sending out, uh, probably yet still this week with Victoria's help, a survey to you. Um, and I want you to know that that survey is anonymous. And the only way that we can grow and get better at this market center is through your feedback. It will probably take you three and a half minutes. I know you all have three and a half minutes to make this place better than it already is. So I'm just going to ask you now to fill out that survey when you get it so that we can get better. And the very last thing that I have is... Um, I'm just thankful for all of you. This We've been through quite a few changes with the leadership team in the last couple of months. Um, some months have been easier than others and some haven't been so easy for some of us. And um, I just wanna thank you for your grace because uh, we're just continuing to make this place better, but it, there's been some bumps in the road. And so I just am thankful for you. So thanks. So the next sign-up sheet is, so the ALC are all gonna be leading committees and I wanna give them a little bit of time to sell their committee, I guess you'd say. And then I will also pass around the sign-up sheet. So we, again, kind of to make the brokerage better, these committees, that's what they're here for. So uh, Kelly, do you guys wanna start it off? Sure. Yeah, Stan. So, um, I'm Kelly. Um, Megan and I are heading up the culture committee. Um, culture committee, according to this big long email that John sent. Um, we oversee the Market Center fundraising efforts uh, for the annual goal of $3,000 in donations to benefit KW Cares. Um, we assist eligible KW associates in need with KW Cares uh, grant application process. And we'll oversee the Market Center's um, non KW Cares relate, uh, related charitable activities. Um, we are also in charge of setting up the whole red day thing and organizing all of that. So if you have questions about that, please um, let us know that. Tati is also um, joining us in planning. And then Jessica in the past has done it. And she's not part of it, but she's definitely 
helping us to figure out what we need to do. So questions can go to her as well. Um, we are also looking at doing just fun things that we can, you know, do outside of work. Um, someone over family reunion mentioned the softball league. I don't know about that, but, yeah, <laughs> but there's all kinds of things we could do, you know, um, bowling nights or <clears throat> dinner out or, you know, whatever anybody has an idea for, for us to, um, you know, we all obviously have a lot in common. We are very busy. We take a lot of time doing our jobs, but we also, it's also nice to kind of spend a lot, a little bit of time outside of work with, um, with other great people from our brokerage. So um, always open to ideas for, for fun things to do for, with the culture, culture club. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, awesome. culture club. And if you guys, again, sign up for those committees that you really kind of feel that passion for to you know, help drive those. So I guess I didn't go from the start. Sarah, do you wanna? Sure. Is there any way to take a picture? Uh, yeah. again. <laughs> Yay, Lisa, thank you. Lisa and I are in charge of the growth committee and growth is um, really geared towards growing the market center. So we're going to be meeting to talk about events that we could host or classes that we could bring to the market center where we can all invite co-op agents or other agents that we think would be a great fit for our culture here at Keller Williams Preferred. So um, if you're interested in helping grow the market center, PS, that's also your profit share. Come yes, talk to me. Get it. Yes. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. She says PS. <laughs> Scotty? Okay, so finance committee, we're obviously the team that's gonna plan like our Valley Fair trips and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I said in the post, I know we need to cap it at 25 of you. So <laughs> everyone wants to be on the finance committee. But, no, but in all seriousness, and for those who know me know that my background is, I was a CPA, I love numbers. Most of you get the glassy and I am energized and jazzed. So we're gonna still figure out what all we're gonna talk about this year, but Know your numbers. Numbers tell a story, um, not only like your personal performance as you're selling yourself to clients or potential clients, but you better have a budget. You better have QuickBooks that you're using. We're going to dive into all that. So I do expect there to be 25 people on the committee. Because <laughs> this to me is the area where I think real estate agents fumble a little bit. Um, and why not put more in your pocket? And if you're not managing your spending, you're going to be one of those millionaire real estate agents that you talk about in the book that makes a million but only walks away with like 50 grand a year. So let's do it. Awesome. Let's do it. I got one person to sign up. Thank you, Tom Wright. So <laughs> 24 spots left. John? Uh, John Hoffmeister. I'm doing tech. And my goal of tech is I'm not going to teach the command, okay? That's his job. <laughs> So don't, uh, you can ask me some tweaks. So what I really want to do in this tech is I really want to find some tools that we can use on the fly, be professional. I'm really looking into doing videos in a in more robust way where you can do um, video blogging, different things like that. How you can have just a few little tools to really enhance your videos on your, on your mobile phone or if you want to do it on a desk. So that's kind of one of the areas I'm looking at. And some of the other areas I'd be looking at is just how we can be productive with our mobile technology and be more efficient with it. And really on the go realtors, right? This is where we make our money. Yeah. So my goal is how to utilize this and really raise up our professionalism and get more audience out there through social media and even our website marketing. So that's kind of my goal and we can take and add more to that, but that's the nutshell. That's awesome, thank you, John. And so the next committee, I mean, they're already ahead of everybody, so you guys know they've already had a meeting. So <laughs> Tasha, <laughs> uh, boy, wait, we only had a meeting because we didn't get along. Uh, yeah, we didn't uh, get uh, along your but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we know how to punch. We know how to make things happen. So what what is our group going to cover? <laughs> I told her I was going to talk. I, I did that on purpose. So, yeah, no, we we talked a lot about um, this office is amazing, and we don't we're not over here going, you know, we're not doing good with social equity and diversity. We didn't have that kind of a conversation. We had a conversation that um, this is a great office, and we believe it's inclusive and loving and embracing of all people, and we want to take that to the world by having helping close the um, the equity gap of homeownership. And in the ways that we thought about, that we brainstormed were, Kids and Kinship is an incredible program in this area that mentors kids. 
And what better way to inspire and motivate children than to have amazing realtors come alongside them and show them what, what we do and how we make money and how people can own homes. So kids and kinship is one thought. And the next thought was there's a um, uh, quantum leap. We would like to become quantum leap. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> teachers, advisors, <laughs> uh, mentors, and have many of you do the same because it's a way for you to market your business to your sphere that you care about their youth and you can teach them and motivate them. And again, what better way to inspire the youth to own homes than quantum leap? So those are the two things that we really wanted to focus on. Um, did I miss? Oh, Red Bench, I'm sorry, Red Bench. Red Bench is, it's not specifically for social equity and diversity, but Red Bench is where you can come and talk about the heavy things that happen in real estate. And in the past, we have talked about redlining, and we have talked about um, code of ethics, where they did a study on um, people who agents. It was, in the, it was over by New York, but it wasn't New York, um, New Jersey, maybe. And blind testing, they'd have somebody come in looking like me with the same criteria as someone who looked like Candace and the same criteria, and they'd send us to two different neighborhoods. They would, I'm, I'm not pre-approved, but she is, but they'd take me out, or maybe she wasn't, and they wouldn't take her out. Not cool. And um, so Red Bench is where we can talk about things like that, and we can make a difference in our industry. So um, we encourage you to come. It's every first Monday at 9.30 a.m., and Ronnie is really good at leading it. It's not us, it's him. <laughs> so come support Ronnie. Did you say Monday or Wednesday? Oh, thank you, it's Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Please don't come on Monday. It's every first Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, no, if you have any ideas or want to see something yeah, else. If there's something, if you do have a concern. Yourself. That's what we talked about yesterday in our first meeting. <laughs> Uh, Dean, uh, yep. Shane's out of town, I think, still. So, um, so yeah, uh, Shane and I are going to co-chair this. Actually, uh, Iron Man Tony Stark here just volunteered to join us. Thank you. <laughs> hey. uh, but yeah, this is a um, you know, we haven't even actually had a chance to like sit down and conceptualize what this means yet. You can kind of print that out for me, and so I'm not going to have it very hard. I just did, but. Um, you know, essentially, you know, it's promoting pro programs and initiatives that benefit the real estate profession at large. I think we're going to have to work through how we're going to be able to incorporate some of these concepts kind of organically at the marketplace level um, and make some differences. You know, anybody who's passionate about our industry, supporting the real estate profession in general, I think is probably uh, a lot of the items that we're going to work through. It even says at legislative level, so lobbyists are all, all, all taking it on. Um, but yeah, strong passion for the industry in general. Um, protecting the agents' rights, which is a big talk here right now. The industry is transforming in so many different ways right now, and we still, uh, we are the core of the industry that, you know, this real estate doesn't really do what it does without uh, professional, well-trained agents uh, leading the way. So, I, uh, Melissa Johnson, I would love to maybe invite when Shane and I get together with uh, whoever else wants to come. Maybe we go into that meeting, just maybe buy some ideas around. Of course. You're so smart and this will yes. be a yeah. more uh, compliance aspects. So, thanks. Awesome. Cool. So, yeah, definitely sign up for any of those things that again you feel that passion for. So, and they will get to you as far as the meetings will be, the chairs will, all that stuff. All right. So one of the things at Family Reunion that really the place kind of erupted when they were going through KW Perks and uh, Jason kind of played the video. Oh, 
So KW Perks, I don't know, that's a silly little ad, right? 30 seconds, Woo But what it is, insurance, collecting the greater group of us together to use our buying power to be able to afford you insurance more cheaply than buying it on your own. You go to kwperks.com, that's A-W-P-E-R-K-S.com and get a quote from them directly on how much insurance, they include vision, they include dental, um, and they have a range of plans that you go through. Uh, you can go there now, so even though it might be a little out of turn, uh, you know, from the insurance perspective of when you can sign up, you can go there now because of the way they have offered that that option. Uh, you can enroll anytime, but kwperks.com, and this is through Keller Williams collectively. Lots of nice little stuff there. Um, as we're getting ready for family reunion, I've cobbled together a bunch of pictures for folks, and we're going to have some folks come up and talk about that, but I'll share those pictures while we're setting up. You got, oh my goodness, there's Sarah. Check her out. Thank you, man. That way. <laughs> Jessica, is that you? That's me. Who's that? Who is that? As to the President Mark King. Oh, my goodness. You guys mentioned Olivia. Who's that with? Who are you with, Olivia? That's Mo Anderson. That's Mo Anderson right there. That's all of us in a donut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. There I am with Gary Keller. You wonder who he is. There he is. He's right there with me. Maybe they went to Epcot. Maybe they hang out downstairs with Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at those two guys. Sharp dressed folks right there. Look at that. Gary Keller's moving around. He's around everywhere now. I thought I was special. That's the airport. Don't get stuck there. <laughs> Eating out, oh, having fun, eating out. Oh my goodness, there we are, eating out again. Oh, there we are, eating again. I think all we did was eat, really. Yeah, the whole thing is eat more. Oh, look, there's Gary Keller again. He's everywhere. Right? He's everywhere. Everybody's with him. There's some people. Look, look at them down there. What are they doing? Eating. That's what we do. <laughs> Drink, Drink. Oh, Drink. Yeah. And then we hug. That's where hockey. And it's family reunion, right? There we go. Eat me, Dad. Because we love to eat. Having fun down there. Oh, crazy, then. Fun people. That one was a was a great night there. Pretty fun stuff. And then uh, this is absolutely my favorite picture. These guys. That is a fantastic picture. I mean, I've called all the pictures. I'm like, this is the best picture we took the whole time we were there. And then uh, then there's all of us together gathered out at that a fantastic be. restaurant. So rolling out. Yeah. What? Yeah. We're eating out again. Yeah. Always yeah. eating out. Yeah. So what? Was, what a great time. Now have some folks come up and talk about this. Yeah, so obviously we didn't just eat. There was a lot of great information really? given. <laughs> and I wanted to have the agents come up and talk about their ahas or the things that they could come back and really put into their business immediately. So I know some of you guys had offered to come up, Scotty, Amanda. Uh, I thought everyone would. I wouldn't have offered Kelly, yeah. uh, Chad, yeah, Ryan. He's acting like he's on. He's not listening to me. I go first because I got uh, it. Anybody else? Like, the hospital appointment. Yeah, I do. Just say that. Ortho appointments. Yeah. Um, so if you guys could just <laughs> sorry, sorry. Everybody, <laughs> sorry, yeah, just kind of talk about maybe you sure at least one thing down. that you is. I'm sorry, can we start at this end just because I do have to see yep. the current appointment? Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no, absolutely. It's kind of your aha. And the, yeah. We're going to steal all your good ideas. I know. I know. <laughs> That's why they do that. Yeah. yeah, so a couple things. I'll go quickly. Um, we spend a lot of time in admin classes, um, but I read through like so many notes that people posted in different pages and stuff, and the information I feel like you can go to this for years. It's just such an amazing experience. So if you haven't been, make it a priority. Start saving now. I mean, you just tuck so much money away every month. It'll be taken care of by this time next year. So make sure you guys speak up. Yourself. Thank you. It's worth it. Yes. Speak no. up. Yeah. Yeah. I can't do that. Save your money and don't bring my kids in the night. It'll be fine. Okay. So, a um, couple things. I have two. One for firstly is. Uh, 
do what you love and again a lot of admin classes but do what you love and pick someone to do the other stuff so it was really interesting um they were talking about you know like leverage and you know burnout in this business is very very happens quickly and um so i've learned that um quickly <laughs> so leverage is a huge thing so for for me, I just thought the coolest idea was even if you're a ways away from hiring an admin or making that step, start like put a piece of paper on your desk and start making a list of the things that you really don't enjoy doing that, you know, just kind of don't bring out the best in you and start making a list of those things. And then you can literally turn around and use that list when you're hiring your next position. And I just thought that was a really cool concept. So I wanted to share that. The other thing I read somewhere else because I didn't take this class but it, it really spoke to me is that to be true to who you are and lead Jen to your strengths, not everyone else's to realize that it's okay. If you do things differently, like I'm a very relational person, a hundred percent of my business comes from my sphere and referrals. So I, I, I don't pick up the phone and necessarily cold call and that works great for some people, but nurturing those relationships works really well for me. So it's, finding what you love and how you make those connections with people. And even if that looks different than other people, just do it. I mean, be yourself and you can grow in this business. So those are my favorite two takeaways. Um, the thing that was funny to me, that was the Hill story is definitely what spoke to me. And as I was making my list of the things that were most impactful for me, so many of them came from that keynote speaker, which was kind of towards the final day. And I remembered in real estate, people don't remember the beginning. They don't remember the middle. They remember the ending which is why we hate 11th hour surprises, right? Make sure closing day is so exciting and that you follow up afterwards because they're gonna remember that more than the fact that they lost 19 times in, in different offers that they've written. And then the other one was, um, again, we went to a lot of admin classes. I, For those of you who have been in KW for a while, you know the term drunk monkey. My drunk monkey is how could I ever find an admin that would wanna grow my business as much as I do? And I was inspired to see some some amazing admins get up and speak about how they just loved making their Rainmakers business grow and, and being that supporting role. And even as we're interviewing and validating KPAs, we're finding people that truly don't want to be the one out like shining. Won't even use the Double Wears Prada as a movie, just kind of an example of there are some people that truly thrive doing that supporting role. And so I just came back feeling like, let's go, we can do this, and uh, not not scared as much about hiring an admin and moving forward. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Melissa's a good dancer. I learned yeah. that. <laughs> she had some strangers, and they exchanged phone numbers, and probably are in each other's like yeah. weddings and stuff like that. Well, you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fun so, so fun. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Chance Kozacek with the CMS Home Group in, in town here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing I took away of this is the secret to success in real estate business is to really care about your people. It's such a small thing that means so much. A big thing with KW, right? So care about your people, not just your clients, but also your team. In fact, I would actually say that. Things. So caring to people. Right, buy dirt. I oh, went, buy dirt. Uh, buy dirt. Oh, like, what is it? Buy dirt. What does it mean for people that weren't there? Buy dirt. Right. Buy dirt. Right. So, if those of you that were in was it Dallas and Orleans two, three years ago, four years ago, three, I think. Three. What did Gary's number one thing that he said on stage to all of us were just talking out his eye? I was like, oh, what? You know, why are you selling your real estate? People buy it. Yes. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Guess what? If we would have listened to him and everybody in this room yeah. bought one piece of the real yeah. estate, can you imagine where you'd be at right now today? <laughs> By dirt. So if your job didn't just hit the ground right now, I would think that. Okay, so maybe we don't know what to buy today and then come back in two years and say, Chad, you told me to buy dirt and I bought dirt. <laughs> but yeah, dang it, buy dirt. So um, go buy a house, people, not just for your people, but for you. Uh, have a peon. You know, and use it. So my implementation. My second things, committee member. I right just text her. I'm like, dang it, I really need to work on a PL. So Scotty's going to teach me how to do that. Thank you, Scotty. I'll screw up. Happiness comes from within, you guys. Happiness comes from within. Right? So, Sean Anchor, big thing, right? Simple thing. So, another thing, I'm working on implementing, right? Ready? Fire aim, ready? Fire aim. And so, the implementation I took was sending a gratitude text every day to somebody. Hey, love you to death. You're awesome. You're, you're a great person. Take that, implement that, guys. It's so awesome.
Like, you learn it bold, and then two days later, like, yeah, okay. mm -hmm. that was kind of cool. But yeah, I've been doing it for about eight days straight, and it's, it's building me up almost as much as that. So think about that. Um, Biter, what else? What else? What else? Boy, we're a great guy, too. And we're looking at you. You're a great guy. Thank you. For the hill that, that Melissa talked about 20 times as steep with, with others in tow, it's, it's one or two times as steep. Truly, truly write that one down. I go on and on and I won't, but this is awesome. Yeah, so great thing. Oh, last thing. I almost take out family units. I'm like, ah, you know, have so many people, maybe a third as many people, and da 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 da. Leave that behind. Every time you go, you will come away with it. If I can implement one thing on this family sheet, you may heard the term one thing before. I guarantee you my business would flourish immensely. And so I'm, I'm working on that. But I'm a scatterbrain, right? So I'm going to work on finding that. Right? So do it, find it, or get it. It's awesome. Life is good. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find the one thing you can't find um, I went to a lot of classes um, on like building your business, kind of like back to the basic kind of classes. Um, but my, I don't know, I learned, I went to uh, like leveraging your business already. Um, and working smarter, not harder, essentially classes, and how to grow your commission without really taking on more listings. Um, and I actually tagged you in this post because he's, yeah, he's doing Zoom classes. We need to do it for the whole market center. But um, so it was just you know ways to offer to set yourself apart, how to offer different packages maybe in your listing presentation, um, and let the seller you know kind of figure out what's more important than the convenience of it. Or the dollar, you know, and offering different listing packages, and you know, do you want this? Do you want me to do this? Well, you know, that's a seven percent commission. Well, if you don't want all this, you can do this for a six percent commission. So, just different ways to increase your commission without doing more, I guess. Um, but so that um, I went to a lot of uh, self discovery class on, you know, finding out what makes you kind of tick. Uh, and building off of that, so one thing I learned I need to take, and I still have it, is the uh, the K K A. -A. Yeah. Um, and, but um, she heard you. <laughs> she heard you. <laughs> she heard you. <laughs> I told her like I need to do this. Um, but you know, and just figuring out how you how you can be a leader in the office and show up, and how doing that alone will help grow your business. So things like that. Well, no, sure. I love my no, notebook. There's not going to be anything really left. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep mine short and sweet. Uh, the biggest thing I took out of is just the diversity of Keller Williams and how all different backgrounds, whether you're, and if I insult somebody, I guess that's how it is. If you're Silver Spoon, that's great. If you can be successful, if you're a Silver Spoon or you grew up in the, you grew up in the trailer park, quite frankly. So it does not matter where you grew up or where you came from. All that matters is what's inside, how you're going to take it and be successful. And that's the most important thing. It's about you. It's not about your environment or anybody else around you. You make that decision of who you want to be in life. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 different countries. We, we talk about nationwide. I understand how many different people in different countries I met. I don't know how many. I mean, I PhDs from Africa, Poland, Russia. I mean, just, yes, of course, Russia. But yet Ukraine over there and stuff. God bless them over there. Hopefully, they're doing better now. But, um, and then the biggest thing is, I think we've heard that phrase, buy happy. Does anybody in town have the buy happy stuff? You have buying cars? Right? Car. <laughs> there you go. So, well, so I think our biggest thing is just sell happy. So we just got to sell happy out there, and it's all about just being happy and pushing that onto our clients and stuff and knowing that they're going to have this big smile on their face and sell happy. I told him to go talk to him as many people as possible. He came back with a stack of cards. Look, I got this guy from Poland, and this person's from yeah. Poland. He's over here in this country. I'm like, you really listen, right? Um, so I think this was my third family reunion. And my first couple, I really focused on classes that were geared towards you know an individual agent, growing my business, sort of like Candace said, like the basics and just really learning and from the best about that. This time now having a team, um, I was just so impressed. Of course, that's what KW is known for, but there's just so much amazing information on, on teams and relationships between a rainmaker and an admin and a rainmaker and the agents on the team, bringing as much value as possible. So 
part of my takeaway was no matter where you are at in your real estate career, whether you just got licensed or you've been doing this for 20 or 30 years, like there's something for you at Family Reunion. Whoa. Um, my favorite part of any Keller Williams, whether it's Megan Camp or Family Reunion, is listening to Gary. And if you can get your hands on the slides from his vision speech, um, they're incredibly insightful. We're going to talk about one of them in particular, maybe even a, a couple of them in growth today. Another plug for growth. <laughs> um, and then, of course, Sean uh, Igor was just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And um, I mean, I think Gary said that's the best keynote that he's ever had. Yeah, it was it was an amazing speech, and I just left there. Um, I keep meaning to implement the text, the, like you grateful would. text every day. Yeah. Olivia well, just heard you. Inspiration to get it done. Yeah. I'm putting it out there. <laughs> now Olivia will hold it on the counter. No, yes, that, I think that, that's a great. That's just great. 20 seconds, right? Yeah. Literally yeah. 20 seconds. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to say anything. It's been mentioned about that keynote speech, and I'm not going to say anything about that because it, it was awesome, but also. Um, Jason will be in here on Friday yeah. watching it. Yes. And so if anyone wants to join him in watching on the big screen, what, 10 to 11.30, is that right? 10 to noon. So, okay, so what I'm not even gonna touch on that, just just go and see it. It's it really amazing. And, and I think I commented on Facebook too that when he first started, I'm like, is this dude a comedian? Or, yeah. you know, I mean, so it's, it's really meaningful and he presents it in a very entertaining way. So anyway, my biggest thing um, in trying to read my writing here, because as I'm taking notes, it's dark in these rooms. And I'm like, um, <laughs> exactly. Um, but mine was from a class that I took about building teams. Um, you can't win if you're dead. You know, I mean, when we get to the point where we're so busy that we are running, 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 um, you know, I think it was mentioned earlier, someone down at the other end saying something about burnout. And so if you're thinking of hiring someone, just keep that in mind. You can't win if you're dead. If you are running yourself into the ground, um, that's no good. Um, me saying no means someone else can say yes. So again, to the to the point of hiring, um, if you're hiring like your first awesome admin like I have, um, me saying no to doing these things gives her the opportunity to shine in her life and, and have a job that she loves and, and that sort of thing. So. I know that so many realtors are control freaks, and I think probably nine out of ten of you would probably say, "Yep, that's me." But you know, there comes a time where you have to let something go and look at it as that you you saying no to to this task and, and giving it to someone else gives them an opportunity to you know to do something great for you and, and feel good about them and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, and then just one thing I, I wrote down from, from Gary's um, speech was, if you want to succeed with people, give yourself over to the process. So, you know, um, whether it's hiring, using the revisioning or whatever, um, he said he used the, um, I can't think what the little term is called now, but um, gut, G-U-T, give up thinking. You know, so you're not having to think about everything, just follow the process, follow whatever process it is that, you know, that you're, there's a process for everything. Follow the process, and then you are not having to think, oh, is this the way to do it? Is this the way to do it? Give up thinking and just follow the process. So those are my big things. Yay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. If you're ever hungry and your OB invites you out to eat, oh my gosh. she will feed you very well. <laughs> <laughs> she will feed you very well. If you have any more that was information amazing. on anything that they were talking about, please search them out. Yeah. Uh, so, Good. as you guys have seen the commercials, uh, yep, we covered mm -hmm. that. Uh, Dave <laughs> is going to. Obviously, first and foremost, we need to thank Dave for lunch today. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you for inviting me today. I enjoyed uh, seeing the interaction. You guys seem to get along so well with each other. It's, you know, uh, I can tell it's a great family. Uh, I won't spend a long time. A um, little bit about me. I'm a Bell Plain resident, so I heard someone down there today got a house coming up. It's good because we don't have near enough inventory. Uh, I know that's a problem everywhere. Uh, I office in Eden Prairie, and uh, I 
probably play everywhere in between. Dakota County is probably one of my favorite playgrounds. Um, just a little story on me. Uh, I became a Keller Williams preferred vendor through uh, indirectly through Jessica. Uh, we were working at a county fair. I was working a Medicare booth. She was teaming up with another uh, Keller Williams preferred vendor, Laura Baseball, for Focus Financial, and just kind of walk in the halls. It was kind of a down day, and you know, connections made, and, and it's kind of cool how life just shapes from that. But uh, I just wanted to introduce myself to you. I am a farmer's insurance agent, so I do a lot, you know, with the home side, uh, the auto as well. Uh, and um, you know, there's a lot of property and casualty out there, uh, but no doubt. Uh, I've been in here before to give presentations on vacant homes or on occupied homes and how coverage can change and exclude and you know it seems like the insurance is out to get the person versus help them in their transition and how you know a good agent can help stay on top of those things just two days ago actually yesterday you know people down in florida said hey you know we're down here this is where we're going to domicile i said well thanks for letting me know <laughs> we need to make that a seasonal property it's actually cheaper and it actually will keep you covered so uh, we made some switches like that. Um, I'm also a Medicare broker, and I know that that might not be the first line of referral for a lot of folks when you're dealing with folks moving. And of course, certainly that would be senior qualified in most cases, aside from folks who are on social security disability. But I'm finding more and more and more uh, other real estate agents will say, gosh, these folks have moved here from another state now to be with their children. And they're saying, hey, uh, my health insurance isn't portable. I'm not on a Medicare supplement. Do you know of anybody? Uh, conversely, for me, I want to get to know as many of you as possible. And I've already done business and referred some business to some of you. I'll have my Medicare clients. Sometimes they're also farmers clients and they'll say, uh, I want to go now to an independent living facility. Do you have a selling agent that you trust? And I, and I have a few and I'd like to have a few more. Uh, also, uh, some of them are looking, they, I have, just a couple who moved back from India a couple of months ago. I'm looking for a good buying agent for our first real home. We're just renting this place. So it's about networking for me just as much as anybody else, both in getting the referrals as it is getting. But I brought some brochures here. There are also, there's also an overflow of those back in my little bin as a preferred vendor. Uh, feel free to take any of it. There's some on the smart home plans for farmers. There's a lot on Medicare. Uh, there's also a little bit on veterans. Uh, because both in the property casualty side of the house and on Medicare, you know, I was an Army civilian for a long time, worked a lot with wounded warriors, 30% disabled vets. Anything, anytime I can work with a, a veteran, whether it's on the property side and get them a good military discount for being a retiree or active duty, or on the Medicare side and they're a TRICARE beneficiary, however I can help them. I work a lot of vet clubs and BFW halls. That's a huge passion of mine. It's not the only thing I do, obviously, but it's a it's a forte, and if it could be the only thing that I did, it, it would be. So I just want to say thank you to all for inviting me today. Love to get to know each and every one of you as time permits and as we you know, go forward, and I hope to come back and maybe give a presentation. But more than anything, we'd love to have a cup of coffee with each and every one of you as you know we reach out to each other and that relationship ensues. Thanks so much. Thank you. So obviously you've heard, you know, the keynote speakers uh, really made an impact on all of us that were down there. And as Kelly said, Jason is going to be playing the uh, whole speech on Friday, about an hour and a half. So uh, in closing, you know, here's just a little quick synopsis of that disadvantage. But if you could improve your productivity by 30% without sacrificing your happiness, what if it turned out to becoming happier was actually a key. After spending over a dozen years at Harvard University, I wanted to test the latest scientific theories of happiness and performance in the business world, outside of the lab and the ivory tower. Over the past two years, I've traveled to speak and research in 42 different countries. And amazingly, what I found at almost all of these schools and companies is that they follow the same formula. That formula is, if you work harder, then you'll be more successful. And if you're successful, well, then you'll be happier. What we're finding in the field of positive psychology is that this formula is broken. Part of it has to do with how we define success. Every time we're successful, we merely move the goalpost of what success looks like. So, for example, if we hit our sales target last quarter, we merely change what that sales target is for the next quarter. And if happiness is on the opposite side of that success, 
Every time you change what's possible for me, happiness is pushed over the horizon. More importantly, what we've discovered in the field of positive psychology is that the formula is actually backwards. Our brains work in the opposite way. Happiness actually fuels success, not the other way around. If you can find a way to get your brain to become positive, your success rates will increase, and as a result, work will become more productive, enjoyable, and more rewarding. So if we can change the formula, it can be the reverse it. Then we can maximize our brain's potential and our performance will increase dramatically. Not to mention the fact that we'll be happier right now in the present. I can imagine that you might be skeptical about all of this. Does <coughs> happiness really make a difference to our work? The research shows that it actually does. Let me explain. I'm like, when's the best time to sell a house? So that's all we have for you today. There's lunch outside, and uh, we'll be back in here in uh, a little bit for Mega Agent. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
every 10 years. And so that's why at the end of our lives, we don't have much talent. Why? Well, we never talked about the book. Oh, no, I guess. It's probably a lot of that stuff.
came up with a couple topics to kind of kick it off today. Obviously, we can go in any direction if you guys want to go. But I know on the ALC call on Tuesday, we were talking about, uh, you know, winning in the multiple offer kind of environment. So let's, let's kind of kick off on that. So anybody want to kind of start off on that topic a little bit? I know it's obviously aggravating to a lot of people. Right. <laughs> Yeah, what do you want us to talk about? How much who, stressed we are by who, it? Or who won in the last 30 days? And how'd yeah. you win? How'd you win? How'd you win? Well, mommy and daddy came in and covered the appraisal gap. That helped. But, um, you know what? Let me just tell you my most frustrating thing is I had nine offers on my $640,000 listing and only about three of them just called me. So I, every day I feel like only about three out of the eight called me. She was the listing agent. I was the listing agent. People just emailed her over offers. Didn't even talk. Or maybe a text, sending one, or anything I should know. And I want to be like, well, lazy ass, call me, and I'll tell you some secrets of what you could do to give a girl. Yeah. What's that? It does, because this whole game is relational. I've won things that were not the highest because yep. I just focus on relationship. Yep. Did that offer get selected? Did the agent, yeah. did the agent call you on the offer you selected? Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, he was the one that called the most and was checking in. He's like, I know you haven't made a decision yet, but I just want you to know that we really want this. And if there's anything we can do to tweak. Don't let me lose out over a, this little thing or that little thing. And he's the one that won, though he was not the highest. You know, I think that's, that's tough. It's tough. And I always call, obviously, and then try to you know, build a rapport. You're fine. You come in, Toddy. 
<laughs> I'm part of the group. And I'm laughing. Um, but you know, how much is too much? You know, am I going to start to piss this person off if I keep calling them? Right. Well, you know. Right. Yeah, because if they have a lot of offers, so they would just probably like, mm -hmm. I but, had that too the other weekend. That wasn't me. No. I didn't no. call, I just kept texting. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the ones who did call at all, it's like, how do you know I got your offer? I mean, obviously, I think you're talking to me. You know, Sometimes the offers go to spam, though. They yeah, do. I, I have found several in spam. And then when you're talking to your sellers, you know, you can say, hey, Christine has been persistent. She's yeah. called me the most. She's got the cleanest written offer. Like, it matters. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have one agent um, <laughs> come to my office and, like, talk to me face to face. So kind of, I had a little conversation with Victoria yesterday about kind of everybody coming together and talking about getting their offers accepted. Mm -hmm. And my point to this is everybody in this room is a stellar agent. We are doing the things when it's appropriate love letters. We are writing, we're coaching our, home, our clients right above, ask, above asking. These are the things we're working with. I feel like everybody in here is doing that. What would be interesting is to chat with our sellers of when I presented the offers, what were the things in the forefront of your mind that made that offer attractive? I mean, obviously they go with what we're saying, but you know, what are the things? Well, who, who in the room knows what why their seller offered why their seller accepted certain offers? For us lately, it's been appraisal gaps, right. no inspections. Right. Is and it simply those things? Is it, is it just that because of this market? It's the most no appraisal gap and no inspection. We've, we've accepted some that are cash that isn't the highest offer. Okay. And Guaranteed. we're working on some options to bring to you guys of companies that offer uh, buyers to write cash offers because these companies will buy them and turn around and sell them to your buyers uh, 90 days later. So as soon as I can get some more details on that, we'll be presenting that to you. There's also onward financing, which we'll be rolling out soon is just as long as we handle everything with um, uh, new American funding. Onward financing is a great option. If they have a home to sell, they can go in uh, not contingent on financing using onward uh, financing. So, um, I don't know what we're seeing is we're not always picking the highest offer we're either picking cash or the cleanest offer or the agent that has been the most communicative because otherwise like we're not gonna we're not gonna accept an offer that's just been emailed over with a ton of mistakes um so i think it's not always the highest offer from what we're seeing on our end the seller wants to get past their pain point it's great right, right. Yep. Well, and we should all know, you know, what those pain points are. What's up, Rezac? Hey, girl. Hey, boys. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. What, what Thank are you, you. Doing in multiple offers right now? Um, losing multiple offers. <laughs> oh, my God, I love you. <laughs> We're all there. Um, so I just put in the chat box, I don't know if anyone can see it, but we, I've got some clients who are in like five to $600,000 range. We've been offering nine to 12% above list price, um, no inspection, no seller paids, um, contingent on the successful closing of a property and like whatever closing date they want, we will give them the kitchen sink. We're donating towards the seller's closing costs and we are still, um, coming up short. So if there's anything that anyone else is finding luck with, I would certainly appreciate it. Or did you say your uh, appraisal gaps? We do, my clients unfortunately do not have appraisal gap funds. So they're 10% down conventional. Anybody seeing appraisal waivers? We just got one of those the other day. Like from the oh, lenders are the uh, waiving the appraisals. Yep. We've seen them after the fact. No, and offer presents you. We went to the lender that we use and they won't do it. 35% down before the investors were leaving. I've seen a lot of money. We, we, 20 percent. We've had it several yeah. 20 percent yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. But really? that was after an accepted offer. Yeah. A little harder yeah. right now because the prices are going so much above what their desk appraisal, like the system spits out if it's in this range. We can waive appraisal and things are going so high right now that I don't think that's why I'm seeing as many. That's what I was told from tradition is um, there, there has been that option. 
market raises the limit now, so they would that back. Well, Kristen, what I don't know, with 10% down, you may not be able to, but one of the things that I've been able to do is if I have a 15, 20% down buyer, we'll cover the appraisal gap, like even if it's up to 30,000. And if we need to put 15 or 10% down instead of 20, we say that up front. So, because PMI is like nothing now compared to what it used to be. Right. So that's helping. And then really having my sellers sell and rent back before they get too excited because. My seller had a contingent offer only upon closing, like you're saying, and he didn't want to take it because there's still some risk that it doesn't close. Even though I educated him that we're through inspection, you know, we weren't through appraisal yet. So that's something to kind of think about too. Okay. Yeah, this is tricky um, because this client in particular uh, put their home on the market contingent upon finding the home of their choice, of course. So, right. It's just this vicious circle. Can their buyers, do, do their buyers have flexibility? They do. Like, and actually we're through, there was no inspection and they also got an appraisal waiver on right on their, the, the buyers for the, for my client's house. So we are literally just, we need to sign paperwork and we're done. So, um, yeah, so I'm just, uh, you know, because we do not have that appraisal gap um, offering, I guess, if you will. I mean, we could knock it down to like 5% conventional, but I just feel like as a listing agent, right, looking at an offer that's 5% down versus 10% down, I would personally rather see 10% down and no appraisal gap, but maybe I'm thinking about it um, incorrectly. Why would you, Scotty? She said she wouldn't, so I'm just making discussion. Why would you not? Why me, would I not? Yeah, to me, if it was 5% down, oh, sorry, sorry, food my sorry you're eating lunch, sorry. But they're going to cover like 20 grand of an appraisal gap. That that would mean more to me because that means my seller is going to get it. And you got to do your due diligence, obviously talking to the loan officer. Have you verified the 5%? Do they have all the money for the closing costs? And I even asked to see proof of that, like proof of funds. That if they're going to do an appraisal gap, I want to see that they have that 50 grand Mm -hmm. in the bank on top of down payment and we asked for that too mm -hmm. okay listing agent. man it's so much easier on the listing side is it not <laughs> yeah well amen right are you gonna raise your hand no, no. i was okay. just seeing the jerky and wondering with all these appraisal gap coverages where are people going to be sitting say it again yeah with all the appraisal gap stuff because i i we all love our clients buyers but to look at somebody and go hey you're going to have to pay out of pocket 30,000 above because these offers are crazy, potentially up to 30,000, 50, whatever. Like, how do you? They're upside down immediately. I, like, that just breaks my heart. And it, it's such a hard thing to go, we either need to get you the house or we need to win. Well, are you guys seeing appraisals come in low? Yep. Yep. Uh, Starting to. Yep. Because yep. it's just out of control. It's absolutely out of control. And, and you know what? I stopped doing any kind of first time buyer. Uh, classes or anything because they can't hang. I mean, mine were first-time home buyers, but because mommy and daddy knew the market and said, you know, we'll cover the forty thousand dollars appraisal gap if needed. At best, otherwise I know. they wouldn't get anything. I just tell my clients. I mean, because we also walk a fine line of skipping an inspection. Like this is super important, but here we are again. Do you want this house, or what's the scenario? So they kind of educate them through that, and at least what we'll do instead of a full appraisal gap. Like they'll go up to five thousand out of pocket. I'm like, you have yep. to set an amount. Yep. Just do something above if we can make the rest of the offer attractive. No inspection, not contingent. Are you guys doing anybody doing the walkthrough inspections? Yes. Because that you know, or a pass fail inspection. We're even getting some of those where it's just pass or fail. Well, they only give you a 30 minute window, so it's hard to even have an inspector come with you. And yeah, what are the chances he's available in the next 24 hours before it's over? Is that during, <laughs> your, is that during your showing? You're doing this yeah, and you're going to want to let the listing agent know, yeah, you know, that you're, you're bringing, bringing an inspection in. through. And so it's not, we're it. not going to, yeah. yeah, we're waiving the inspection but when we send in our it. offer, but eyeballing. just eyeballing. I thought we that the buyer, oh, go ahead. I said, we have the buyers put on. When they don't do an inspection, we have them put on their own home warranty with seller coverage for the seller during the time frame. Ah, that adds go. to the offer. Oh, that's a good idea. Yep. Listing. So, if anything happens in the six weeks that it's on them before closing, or just goes out or whatever, we've got sellers, sellers coverage that the buyer pays for. 
You're not in a body bag. No. Not and, you, and your hair looks good. Hey. Good job, <laughs> Shane. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. Thanks. Um, Kelly, what were you going to say after that? Well, I was going to say, I thought that, and, and not that obviously we have to do everything that Greg Hartman says, but, you know, obviously those are good guidelines he gives us. But I thought he did not love the idea of kind of a walkthrough inspection because it still leaves a lot of liability. So it's Greg. <laughs> uh, what he has said before is if you if you are informing via writing the listing agent that you're bringing an inspector through he didn't say like I approve that but if you're going to do them it's kind of implied approval exactly kind of showing I mean that's just how I live my whole life right so <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's for forgiveness versus forgiveness. I mean really you know it's, it's he didn't say don't do them you're not allowed to do them if you do them you're fired from kdpr yeah. like yeah. you didn't get that specific um the other thing i know christina and i and a few others just in random um let me just pass this back in uh kind of in coaching conversations has been all right well uh jordan Freed even said it here recently too um the mls is dead and so uh meaning when something hits the market you're going to be in multiples and so I just thought I would share with you, and I know I've shared the win in multiple offers before with from HHG, but this one is just a, a document that we put together for the agents on our team. Like we should brainstorm in here how we can go get proactive to find off-market properties for our buyers, right? So that we're not in multiple offers times 10. Obviously, door knocking, flyers, um, circle prospecting. There's different programs out there. Jessica has Cole, uh, Cole's directory. If you have a neighborhood you know your buyer wants to be, or Remind's a good option, you can plug right down into that neighborhood. There are still for sale by owners on Zillow.com. If you haven't looked there, go to Zillow.com and click on sellers. I believe it's still called Make Me Move, but look there. An agent on our team just got one accepted two weeks ago from finding a for sale by owner on Zillow. I'm not even kidding. Okay, TNAS properties. Now, Greg's not in the room and neither is Melissa Johnson. So just take that um, you know, for what it's worth. We have sold a few that were TNAS. Listing agent moved it back to active so that we could do the showing and we got the offer accepted. So I'm just telling you, like you've got to think outside the box here in order to you know, win off market. Um, obviously, there's different Facebook groups. Any coming soon listings? I know it says HHG, but I didn't have time to unbrand it for this meeting. But go to that um, spreadsheet that we put all of our coming soons and our buyer needs in there. Um, we talked about the making moves on Zillow. Targeted mailings. Some people are winning with golden letters. So let's just keep those going. But you can't just mail the letter. You need to follow up with a phone call or you're wasting your money, in my opinion. Um, because we've had people on our team set appointments for making the calls after the golden letter went out. So you've got to touch them more than once, in my opinion. Um, canceled listings, obviously coming soon. But when you're looking at canceled and expired, ladies and gents, you've got to go back a couple of years, right? And it's annoying in the MLS because, you know, if it's sold since then, you're not going to see it on that specific line item. But if you really have a buyer, you can't just wait for this stuff to hit the market. We've got to find other ways. So it's going to take some work on your part, but you've got to, you know, time block that in your calendars to search cancels and expires because there's stuff, there's stuff out there for sure. And if you just call those people and say, give me a price, you couldn't sell back in 2018. What if I brought a buyer through right now? Would you consider letting me bring a buyer through? Should be following my own advice on this. That's how we found our own house. We, um, I went back five or six years because I knew that you know, one or two wasn't going to cut it. But I yeah. went back five or six, and I got there just in time because yeah. they were going to sell in three months. They were going to hold it. Beautiful. So, we bought our uh, cabin in Hayward off of a golden letter last August, right? Um, past clients that have a house that might match. Go through your database. Be call we all should be on the phone every day with our past clients in our sphere. Just calling to say, inventory is low. Who do you know that's thinking of selling? Well, how about you? What number would I have to bring you an offer on? And then you've got a buyer right on that damn spreadsheet. Guarantee you there's buyers on there that somebody has in this marketplace, right? And maybe it won't be them, your past client, when you call them that says, you know, but you're touching them and maybe they'll think of you and send you a referral, right? Um, 
ignore the next one again, didn't have time to take that off. Chime is just the, the CRM that our team uses. Listing contingent on the sale of another property. We had somebody win with that. You're shaking your head yes. Does everybody know what I mean there? Okay, so on the MLS, look for things that are sold subject to the sale of another property. And that box should be checked on all of your buyer searches. You can swoop in. With the new system, that gave me an opportunity to make sure those things were on there yeah. and to add TNAS yeah. for that reason. Does everybody know what I mean? I feel like the air just got funky in here or something. No? Well, okay. I was just thinking, oh, I, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. And, and that's why we're talking about this, right? Like, let's just, there's little tweaks that we can make, right? Um, you know, builders, of course, non-owner occupied properties, which we just learned we can do that in Remind too. So. So what are other ways that we can add to that list that you guys are finding off market properties? Anything come to mind? I think that? Could... It looked like you were gonna say something. <laughs> I got nothing, girl. <laughs> Cheese curds and Hayward, how were they? Delicious <laughs> and so nutritious. <laughs> Yes, go ahead. I, I just am disappointed that we don't use that coming soon and withhold. I just keep thinking of my diner friends that they sell amongst themselves because they have this system or whatever. Every time they have a listing that's coming or they have a buyer needs, they just map make in that thing. I know that's what our system is, but I don't feel like we're all using it. I will see things come to market and I'm like, that was never on that coming soon list. Why How do you think we do a better job of doing that then? Having people contribute to the list of what buyers? Yeah. Well, when we submit a withheld front desk, <clears throat> does it go on there? No, it doesn't. It. They're relying on us to go in say, and do it. That would be um, maybe that's, that's a step we could have That would be amazing if the front desk <laughs> we did that because that's well, one of those I'm things sorry. that it sounds so dumb to say it out loud, but it's a pain in the butt to enter stuff on that list. Yep. Yeah, and you don't remember to do it until he sends an email before exactly. the team meeting. No, like I entered it with help yesterday, but I completely forgot about putting it Okay, there. consider it done. Well, well, and we only you. put up the listings. We didn't even go over buyer needs. Because it would take 45 minutes. <laughs> it would take forever. But still, that will still be on us. I mean, the, yeah, the buyer needs the front Buyer needs you have to do. Be, no, we'll right, change, right. we'll change it immediately with the front desk. Um, anytime it withheld. Anytime it withheld, yeah. Or coming soon. Or even coming soon. Well, coming soon. Yeah. Coming yeah. Soon. Okay. As long as it's that time, like it's not tomorrow. Yeah. But then, like, how are you all going to remember to go look at the damn spreadsheet? Because if we implement this, will you do that? Where will I the think spreadsheet so. be? You will? Where will the spreadsheet be? Everybody's got access to it. We send it out via one. email and it's in the Facebook. Yeah. So, like, you just would have to. It, it's actually it's so simple if you go into just your main email and you type in WPR uh, coming soon. An old email with the link will come up, and you just you always, or you can bookmark it, right? Yeah, like, link yeah. is the same as what's always in Friday email. You got it. You just go in your Friday email. Yeah. And yeah it's lots of places. Which it didn't yeah. used to be called Friday email, but people kept getting confused and couldn't <laughs> find it, and we're like, it's the email that went out on Friday, Friday, so now it's called the Friday email. <laughs> um, but yeah, we will we'll change it right now. I'm sending a message because I don't have a pen. Is there a link to it in our post Facebook page? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tag you in it. Mm -hmm. A button. It's just a link. I'll tag you in the yeah. post. Um, okay, keep going. I just have to send this email, or right. don't forget. <clears throat> what else? Um, I I had a that listing that uh, an agent specifically asked me after I let everybody know that they didn't get the house. He specifically asked me, "Will you make me your backup offer?" Like ah. he said. And yeah. just, Transparent. If that happens, could be transparent with me where you're at, what you need. We'll be there. We we have some appraisal get money. He sold himself on back buffer. We closed yesterday with him. Wow. Yep. Okay. Well, that's so something we need to add to the list. He became my new buyer. And, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so add so that to the how to win a multiple offers. Push, uh, push, to, at, push to be the backup offer. And also be very nice to the listing agents. Yes. yes. I have something that were really mean to me. Yeah. Or like right. just so much backlash that I got from my next listing. Wow. And it's like, why would the other one work with me? Right. Totally. Yeah. And you got to play the long game. But, you know, flattery yeah. goes a long way. Building yeah. those relationships, yeah. even like I think you were saying, we didn't choose that person's offer. Well, they're going to remember that you were so gracious. And yeah. so when you submit an offer on one of his listings later, 
Hopefully that right. took it forward. Yeah, we lost out on one Sunday and they did tell us it would be the backup option. So, second best. Um, <laughs> and, but you just never know. Like he just closed on one that was, yeah, they chose the backup offer, second. right? So yeah. are you guys being super direct with the listing agents? Like, all right, Allison, just tell me what I need to be. Where do I need to be in terms of price? They are not obligated to tell you. But they do. But they yeah. do yes. if you ask the question. Yeah. Where John's really direct at asking the you questions. You just have to ask. Talk. Yeah. yeah, they'll talk. Just hey, tell me a little bit about what nervous. your seller's looking for. <laughs> what? Yep. What does just the seller need? Where do I What's need to important? be in terms of price to get this done? Let me see if my buyers will do it. Yep. 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 And don't close the door. Just you know, keep pounding them to give you some more information even when they're looking at offers. I, I leave it to me. I'm going to be your cleanest offer. Just tell me what price I need. Oh, there, there you go. go. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Oh. That's a good one because oh. you've already told them how to think. You already told them you're the best, right? So subconsciously, there's so much psychology behind that. Yeah. We actually are writing an offer for a buyer who found a property himself, <laughs> going in his old neighborhood and just uh, asking somebody that had extra land, like if they would sell him five oh, acres yeah. of it. Oh, so well. he kind of knew where he wanted to be and he just said, hey, I found this. Can you write this one? I did this last year too, and I've done it several times since. Um, I'm like, hey, I know you're probably multiple offers. It's a crazy time. Uh, I just submitted ours. I don't know if you, I don't know if you have something to organize all your offers with, but I'll send you my spreadsheet that I That's use. Yes, huge. yes. Send me that spreadsheet. And uh, well, now Kelly just sent me a better one to use hers. But my favorite part of that story, though, the first time I did it, the guy did not know that <laughs> you need to make a copy of it, or otherwise. We're sharing that document. Yeah. And so I'm watching this guy fill out. Oh all yeah, the I remember you saying that. <laughs> From there I am, middle of the pack. And you you knew right then and I there then what your buyers needed to be at. I told my client real quick, told them where all the offers were at, called yeah, them really quick. And this is a ethics issue for it. So I, uh, <laughs> it's his fault for making the mistake. Right. Yeah. I said, you know, before you submit those, I think we're going to re offer. <laughs> it worked. So, well, wow. Still didn't get it, but at least we were. Did you then tell him to remove you? You never know you when it's going to be you again. I'm not just tech advocate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you are an agent advocate. She did, you did. Oh, 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 you got busted, yeah. I, in that moment, I was my client's advocate. Yeah, that's that right. Your, I meant moving forward. <laughs> well, I had an agent if I can. Can I? Uh, I'm looking at you, Sarah. Me? Yeah. So she did exactly what I do. Every offer that I, I call them, I butter them up, just form relationship. I mean, and I just said, listen, if there's anything we can do, give me a chance. Like, I, I promise that I'll get this to closing. I'm using my number one preferred lender. These are awesome clients. I make them think that it's Jesus buying their house. And um, Sarah did the same thing. She came back and said, just give, just give us an opportunity. Give us a counter if we're not the highest. So I told my seller that we're looking at eight offers. And I said, this one right here is from a girl that I know and trust explicitly. She's in my office. You have no responsibility or requirement to do so. But she has asked if we could counter her, whatever it would take. And he's like, no, I love that. If it's somebody you work with and you trust, because I always talk about for the next 45 days, we're in a marriage. Yeah. And a lot can happen. And we're, so we need it to all go smoothly. And, and he did give me the opportunity to go back to Sarah um, and give her that option. And we just laid it out there, of course, because my clients gave me that permission right. to say, here's the price, here's the term, here's what it would take. And then it was up to her clients to say yes or no. And they couldn't remove a certain contingency. contingency. Sure. Yeah. So, but they still have the house. You had a, you had a, had the opportunity. Yeah. and maybe with Onward, they would have. Oh, yeah. Exactly. We got to have that in our back pocket to use up front. Well, if you're doing it like an hour them. before, you're presenting offers. There's just not a lot of time sure. to get. So, who in the room is unaware of onward financing, so that we can give you a brief description of it right now? Okay, there's a couple. Who wants to? I mean, I can talk, but I've been the only one talking. So, you want to tell them what onward financing is? <laughs> well, I mean, and how you know them? Well, I do know. Them, so, but I mean, Dean's worked with them actually. Yeah. Okay. So, well, I've just been making myself an expert. I can't hear you. What? I've been making myself an expert real quick. On okay. It. I'm getting, you know, Katie and getting people. Uh, Link and everything because I mean, for example, I've got three rock star clients. Yep, they uh, two out of the three qualify for both homes already. Okay, um, 
The other one, not quite, but they have tons of equity. All three of them, tons of equity, super great credit. Okay. So, like, why would that be a problem? They're in a great position to buy. But I'm discovering this onward thing. They apply for it. They get approved, um, non-contingent through this program, and they don't have to close on that product. It's kind of like their safety net in a way. But now I'm basically taking them and making, like, tipping the scale just in their favor that much more, so that they can make an offer non-contingent on financing. That's good as cash in my book. It's a high way of So, but basically, what it is, if you don't know what it, uh, not familiar with it, is uh, you apply. Um, to become a non-contingent buyer, essentially, uh, you have to pay four ninety-five to on where they will perform an appraisal on your house, your current house, uh, to figure out what's worth, and they will borrow you up to eighty percent of your loan value. Mm -hmm. um, out of that eighty percent, your mortgage gets paid off, and they will give you the leftovers in the form of a uh, cash from a line of credit. You don't have to make payments on that um, on your new loan. Your old loan's paid out, don't make payments during your loan, it's accruing at 8% um, interest only per diem. Uh, you should count on having that accruing for, what, I think they said the average like 30 days. Yeah. 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 And then you're set to go on that program now. You, you've got a pre-approval letter, you're ready to go and just go shopping. And if you can get it accepted, now you list your house immediately. Just be ready to sell your house. And so all the timing works out great. You may never have to close on that product, but um, but but your pre-approval sure says that you you have. I mean, and it's non-contingent non on finance. On fin they don't have to sell their the house and for them. The non-contingent financing is their uh, assured close for Yes. Yeah. And then uh, they're also kind of a one-stop shop. They do not legally. They can't obligate you to do your new mortgage on your new house through them, but the way they have it set up, they are put it up on rates. They make it easy. They'll make it easy for you. It's just I, I just I know that they do this because that's that's the end game. They want that final one, that final loan. Right. So, uh, Dean, we talked about this. The ALC was invited to be present for the onward financing presentation that they gave to the ALC and John and I. Um, and obviously we all have relationships with Brian Center and Brian Center does a lot for this office. And that being said, we want to bring you options. And so we will be speaking to Brian. They have the uh, a program that they rolled out, not at today's meeting, but the meeting before. What cash program. Cash program. Cash program. Yeah. This is different. And why is it different? We talked about this. Uh, that one, the pros and cons, I guess the pros of the uh, New American funding program is that they will go up to 90% loan value or 10% down, essentially. Uh, 15 on the FHA, the VA. Um, so that's the big pro. They, I, I, onward and uh, New American are very similar. I think they both require 680 to 700 uh, minimum credit scores. Uh, the difference is with the New American uh, program, they actually buy your new house. And so the buyer's name is, so their LLC? So, well, then the, the, I don't know that. I don't know the answer to that, but they will, your buyer will have double the fees with New American, yes. not with Onward. Um, correct? Yeah, yeah, double, yes. Well, it's that, but well, then it's also 10%. I can tell you the cons of that program, yeah. The cons are they buy your house, you don't own your house. Maybe they'll run financing while you're in the house. You're now a tenant that doesn't qualify for your own house, so that's, right. that's a problem. The costs are high. It's a three percent earnest money that the um, American will hold. Three percent can be a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then the uh, convenience fee, which is ultimately the program cost, I believe is like one and a half percent versus four ninety five. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is that all onward is? It's just a five hundred. Well, I think it's five hundred bucks, right? It's four ninety five guaranteed. You have to pay out. Oh. The appraisal, but if you do end up closing on that line of credit groundwork, that's right. It, it tolls out with the appraisal to about eighteen hundred. Okay, so which is still going to be way less than one point five percent. Yeah. One other thing, I uh, with another client I had today too on the onward thing, they got approved for the credit union for a bridge loan, right? Which would be a comparable scenario, I guess, to the onward thing. But the bridge loan was twenty four hundred dollars in closing costs. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper to do the onward. Sure. Kind of Right. You know, it's going to go dollars for dollars. Yeah. 
Uh, has anybody used knock lately? Apparently they got, they've gotten better. So I will revisit that for you guys. Um, there's another one that I just actually learned about at eight, about eight o'clock last night, right before I went to sleep. I was texting some OP friends down in the Carolinas and they use a program down there called Ribbon. So I uh, set up a webinar. They only gave me an option for 10 o'clock today, which was 11 o'clock our time, which was team meeting time. So I signed up for the webinar, hoping I would get the recording. But I'm going to go through that webinar for you guys and just see if it's worth it. Um, it's very similar to knock um, and then i'm not going to disclose the third one yet because I, I haven't done enough research on it, but the, the one that I am not going to disclose to you yet is same thing it's a cash where the company will buy it for your buyers in cash, and so you will write a cash offer and within 90 days your buyers will buy it back from them, we just had a team member on our team. Uh, her parents bought the house cash for her. And then she turned around wrote a purchase agreement with Colin and they're going to basically close after the close right. Um, so we've just got to start thinking outside the box, which is why i'm going to go to some of these other companies and see what I see how I get them here for you. Um, which does suck when we have you know relationships with our lenders and yet I told my lender this morning when we spoke at 730 I said we've got to figure this out if you guys aren't going to figure out a cash program for you know this isn't Brian Sunder, but i'm like. We've got to, you know, maybe you're just going to have to take a back seat for a while because we've got to get some of these offers accepted market, in yeah. this market. So uh, hopefully, I'll have those that that third one in the next couple of weeks for so you guys. This third one you're talking about. So many of the others are how do you make a non-contingent offer? But is this one just for? I mean, this is cash. I've got a lot of first-time buyers is, yeah. who don't have something to sell, but we're struggling. I don't think it matters. I think that it's just cash. Different. Yeah, I think um, just like how knock is and how this ribbon is. Um, but again, I haven't vetted ribbon yet, but I have, like I said, OP friends in the Carolinas that their companies are using. Now you guys can go to ribbon.com and sign up for whatever it is. Um, you just find the so website and do your own webinar and decide if you want to do it. Um, let's see. Uh, ribbonhome.com um ribbon cash offers um so again i don't have any details on it i learned about it last night and, and haven't researched it yet and like i said their webinar was right when i was going to bed um or their webinar was when we were having our team meeting today so that's one um that would be the same as as not which is a cash offer but we just didn't have a great experience someone on our team and somebody in the market center both ran offers with knock and i don't it was it wasn't good but apparently they've, they're they're calling and they're begging and apparently things have changed so might be worth somebody no, in the room. If anybody has a buyer that you're sick of losing in multiples maybe try it through knock I mean I what what happened with yours ours was delayed I believe it still closed it was just delayed for ours, I can find it, out why it's just. I think Sarah and her mom both came back saying that they felt like the customer service was really bad. And okay. Explained well. Sarah's mom was really confused about the process, which okay. made Sarah in a difficult situation yeah. in trying. You know, she's trying to learn about this thing too, and so you know, it wasn't my transaction, but I was obviously talking Sarah through. But we had to go back to knock several times. To get clarifications on things, to get um, answers to questions, to um, you know, just make sure we we understood the process. It was it was not user friendly. I'm sure. sure. No. Okay. I just sent a message to our team member to ask if she remembers why we had issues. I think it was very similar, but it did. Did they end up closing or no? Yeah. 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 Just frustrating. Well, yeah, it was more just the process. Yeah. It was hard. Yeah. Well, I'll circle back with them and you know they're they're calling and they're saying they've changed and whatever so I'll I'll vet them out again and see if it's worth bringing it back to you. They reached out to me probably three or four months ago again. Did they? Okay. I'm your main guy, you work right through me, have yeah. any problems. Maybe call him, John, and just say like we had some and I let the rep know loud and clear that we had issues and that okay. we were not happy. But maybe issues. you Maybe you call him too and just say, hey, we had some bad experiences in our office, but apparently you guys have changed what's different. Let's then compare stories and see if we get the same answer. That's a good one, yeah. Good idea. So, yeah. I'll call him. All right, I'll call my guy if you call your guy. <laughs> no, we'll a gal. I don't even remember. We'll for drinks, right? Go over the information. Well, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, 
Say it one more time. I haven't seen him lately. What about you guys? Oh. No. Yeah. Time I, I think it's I just. I called and said, um, go to your highest number and, and my spellers will take it. And he did. Yeah. Yep. yep. I had a couple, but I think it just gets kind of confusing when you have like multiple oh, going yeah. on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And most actually listing agents don't right now either. Yeah, so they're saying like, no if you're going to offer that, make sure you ask the listing agent, hey, what do you think of escalation clauses? Because yeah. most of the time they don't like them. Yeah, Which we like them on the, um, we don't like them on the listing side, but we like them on the buyer's like side. Right? <laughs> yeah. If the listing agent likes them. Yeah. The other one I saw come up quite a bit is they don't want to see love letters anymore either. Yeah, interesting. Anybody so winning? Anybody winning? Like every time I ask the agent, are they open to reading it or I send it? And if they're willing to, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had good success with all we've done. Overall, we have. My sellers just specifically said we don't want to read one letter. Yeah. At yeah. All. Yeah. This is a business transaction. Well, hey, so when you really know what your <laughs> sellers want, when you're yeah. representing the seller, you know. That's when we can also take it over to the buyer side and we just nail that listing agent. What is it that your seller is looking for? And what's that number that I need to be at in order to win, right? I mean, because I've got listings coming up in Nashville and they're elderly people. They want to know who's buying their house or whatever it is. And they yeah. so letters yeah. work for the letters do yeah. because they come from that generation of connection. I don't agent. disagree with them. I just have to cross that. They just, I will just always, totally and then say, shut it down. If you can present it, please do. But as a listing agent, yeah. you have Buyers agents, no pictures. Yeah. Cover your ass moment right there. That's for sure a Greg Cartos one. Yeah. Oh, no right? pictures in the letter. No pictures in the letter of the buyers. Oh, so if your buyer true. sends you a letter with their pictures on it, you, you have can't. to advise your client to remove <coughs> remove the photo. Oh, because you'll get in trouble. Yeah. Potentially an ethics matter. Well, not ethics. It's uh, your sellers, the sellers oh, may discriminate. This is what my buyers look like. Yeah. Oh, got it. Unfortunately. Take their names off too, then. And I, just, I don't like to see their last names. I mean, I guess they're seeing the names on the offer. They see the offer. Right. Yeah. Oh. Right. Oh. Like, well, when they sign, they do, but they don't have to know. Yeah, they don't the see the names before it. I mean, well, when you present it, it's in the well, it's in the purchase like, agreement. Purchase so agreement. So I had oh, well, I mean, I guess I, I spoke to. I mean, if there's like buyers. six offers, I'm not. I just slap them all. You know, I just show them the spreadsheet. Yeah. spreadsheet. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I create a spreadsheet as well, but I was thinking only need all names off. Buyers, sellers. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know that our when our agents are working with multiple offers, I don't think they're telling the sellers like Bill and Sally or what. You know, I think they're just. Here's the terms. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's way too a, much time. But when there is a love letter, um, Allison's point was that sometimes our sellers Google the buyers. True. Or, and you know that's not something we can. Right. Right. No, but if they don't have their name. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> they, don't they don't have the purchase agreement. Yeah. They don't, they don't, don't sign the purchase agreement. They don't see that till they sign it. So I'm talking about once they've chosen. Once you're just talking. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, some know. some might yeah I, I mean with some that's... some of ours we're we're emailing over like yeah, know, three so offers think... and then say and then going over the spreadsheet so yeah. they might yeah yeah a lot of times they want to know if they have family it's like I can't ask yeah these schools I can tell you but I can't right. ask if they have one kid no kids yeah, yeah. who they're married their preferences yeah. yeah you hear you hear the new news they're that he's not going to be able to discriminate on hairstyles any longer. I'm screwed. That, that's in that's, that's in Christina. Minnesota. That's in Minnesota. Did you read that? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Really? That's a truth. It's more. It's an employment. It's an employment issue. Oh. oh. That is like Christina goes. I'm screwed. Yeah. <laughs> you say you're protected. I love yeah. it. Protected. <laughs> that's interesting. I didn't know that. So you got spiked hair, no hair, gray hair. I can't discriminate. Yeah. Well, those of us in the room who color our hair. You'll never know if we have gray hair or not. I mean, you maybe others in the room the color there. Yeah. Catch you at the end, yeah, every what, four or five weeks. <laughs> three, three, four weeks. Oh, oh man. Change the Right. Did that come up in an ALC meeting how beautiful his hair is? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> and now we don't we won't ever let him live it down. Yeah. Good job, Shane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> KW cares. Let's get your fire department to do posters, posters you don't for Katie. See a lot of them. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to turn that idea over to Jessica. Is Mark Oslo here? Yep. 
He had hair. That's like, awesome. I love along, it. Along with you, Christina, projected. <laughs> That's so fun. All right, yeah, ladies and gents, be. what else? I actually want to kind of come back to this whole love letter. Um, I, I kind of feel like for fair housing to protect everyone, we do kind of need to not share names. Okay, take it off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just me, I guess I'll do it that way. Yeah. I mean, any, anybody can, right. I, I would tend to agree with you, but I can't, because we're, can't we're tell coming you how across to do it. Foreign names, we're coming across man and man, woman and woman. We're coming across a lot of things that maybe none of us have an issue with. Right. But that doesn't mean that, that our sellers don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some the signatures. Have a lot I mean, of the yeah. signatures. All the signatures are always. What she's saying, I'm though, saying is. You're not going to see that till after the offer is chosen. If you have 20 offers on your, if you're the listing agent, you have 20 offers, you're not, you might not email over all 20 offers to the seller. You may say, here's, here's 10 of the, the best 10, in my opinion, in the spreadsheet and you pick and you're probably not putting names and you're put, you're putting closing date, you know, all the terms. I'm so yeah, take, take the names off if you want. Walking through it with them and then they and they choose, and then I'm reading through it with them to make sure that it's, sure. if there's only three, then I read through all three of them with them, but if there's, yeah. you know. And some of you guys are printing them all out and meeting them in conference rooms and literally signing, you know, putting them across yeah. the table, and that's cool too. Let them choose. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna do that? A lot of paper. I'll call them, and when they decide, I'll print all the paper and then sign one contract. Yeah. Yeah. I have, because I have clients that have no email. Yeah. Than like a quarter to 40 miles away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, we got to do a change letter. Oh, yeah. What else can we do to help you guys during this stressful time? Therapy? Mm -hmm. Massages? <laughs> That's probably Massages? Cool. That's a good idea. Uh, actually, we write that down. Will you write that down? Because we, we've done chair massages before, before team meetings, so we can look at that. Oh, really? I like it. Uh, yeah. They had like 20 of them lined up at Family Arena and you could stand in line and pay for it. And I never got there, but I was like, every time I walked by, I was like, oh my gosh, I should sit down in that chair with it. They probably always full, weren't they? They were always a line. There's always a line. Um, okay, so we will, um, so I gave you the ribbonhome.com. I will circle back with you when I can get that third one. Um, we will figure out what we need to do in terms of a conversation. I would plan to have it with Brian, but it looks like he might be out this week on vacation because I haven't seen him. Um, please be respectful of that relationship until we have that conversation with him about Onward. But if you need Onward's phone number, I sent it to, I texted it to you, a couple of you in the room, but if you need it, tell me, I'll just send it to you right now. Um, and then John and I will circle back with our knock person and I emailed the front desk about the withhelds and the coming soon. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that I'm forgetting that? What's the withheld and coming soon? Um, adding uh, when the front desk um, gets a withheld or a coming soon into their you know command, so. they're going to put it on the spreadsheet. So oh, they have to remember so it. that the agents don't have to remember to put it there. Now, what they might not know is like some of the details, like the little note section. They'll know bedrooms, bathrooms, price, you know that kind of thing. So then you guys would. But then I guess in the team meeting, you can just. Yeah, speak up about it. Yeah, that's a great idea. When it must have the text of without the one scene, will that be up to us to get updated then? You won't, you and you and 99.9% .9 of agents won't do it, so we'll have to the, we'll have the staff so clean that up. That, yes. I used to be one of y'all, so I know. <laughs> I'm thinking as you said it, I'm like, I wouldn't do that. I ain't gonna remember to go back to the spreadsheet, but we'll make sure they do. One other idea on winning in multiples, um, last month Shannon was at a Sunday open house. She was posting emails. Sure. And an agent came in with both buyers. They had, they had presented an offer the night before. And uh, they came with both buyers and someone who she doesn't know if it was a professional inspector or just a dad, but it was an inspector. And so they spent an hour and a half at the open house inspecting the house. Uh -huh. And basically, the listing agent. Was shooting the breeze with Shannon the whole time and just killing it with rapport the whole mm -hmm. time. And Shannon didn't know any better. She's like, Yeah, this is great. Good for you guys. It was, she sold it as we want to have a, a special contingency, so we're doing this. And uh, 
it worked out fine. They submitted an uh, offer not to do inspection. She had an agent really well, and they were just too far off the price to win. But I, that just stood out to me as maybe use the open house in some way. Sure. I don't know. I, I would be really annoyed by that, but I, I get it. I mean, I guess from the buyer's perspective, it's an open house. I guess you can do that. Well, I, I think you're still supposed to disclose open houses aren't for home inspection. Yeah. That's really. I just feel like. Probably not cool. I probably wouldn't allow If you've got other people coming through the open house, which I would assume in this market you do, and they're seeing that, that that could scare away solid buyers. But so I don't know. Right. They take it well, and this so is why gloves are off right now. <laughs> this yeah. is why everybody can, I'm for the most listening. part, oh, make decisions yeah. based on their business. You don't want to put the names on there. Don't put the names on there. You want to put the names on there. Cool. Put the names on there. Until Greg tells us that we can't. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm just speaking openly. I want you guys to, I want you to be ethical and I want you to do the right thing. And yet if it's not been something that we've, you know, just do your business how, you know. I was under the impression that we had to at least email offers over to our clients. Make Here's the, so I, I have never only done a spreadsheet. I don't print out a hundred pages of right, yeah, 27 offers. But I was under the impression that in order to present it, you have to send it to your client. You, you are right. I'm 99.9% .9 sure. And we just learned uh, kind of the hard way on our team uh, two weeks ago that if you have, ex if you're the listing agent and you have, well, either side, let's just say in this scenario, if you're the listing agent and you haven't accepted an offer, so you are moving to pending status. You're in pending status and you get another offer sent over to you because they didn't know. I mean, because it happens quick, right? No inspection, front desk moves it to pending to stop the showings and you get another offer. You are obligated to, to present that offer even though you were already pending. Absolutely. Okay, well, we somehow yeah. missed that on our team with, yeah. if, it's accepted, it's accepted, if it's already accepted, if it's already signed and accepted, you still have to present. So if you well, are representing a buyer, use that to your advantage if they say sorry we just accepted an offer actually uh you're legally uh obligated to present my offer to your seller i believe that you have to so there you go the way to close. i thought it was all the way to closing. it's all the way to closing yeah. oh it's all the way to closing and okay. granted you can't it uh, there is going to be a point when you really can't force that buyer out but right but you so can also not agree to it Right. right, and they might be not have their inspection yet, and they maybe can't come to terms during inspection, and then their buyer's offer is in there. Accepted yeah. backup wait. offers a lot of times. Oh wait, you said they are in successful yeah. cancellation yeah. previous. I have a years. coaching with one of your peers. Like, yeah, so cool. yeah. They sold it for more. Yeah. Turn over yeah. cancellation, yeah. baby. Please. Yeah, that's interesting. Like what you're saying, what constitutes a percentage offer? I thought you needed. To, so I don't. I don't you know. Go grab Melissa. Uh, 27 hours. Yeah. I do the same thing with the spreadsheet and I go over the you know the ones with the strongest terms. But I, I I have always emailed over every single offer. And if that's the case, and half the time they're not, you know, I, I put the summary in the email so they're not even opening up the offer. They're like, oh nope, this one's asking for closing costs or whatever. But then but they have it there. They could open that and look at the names because it's on the top line of the purchase yeah. agreement or whatever. So do you record the actual email from buyer no, agent? No, you no. Just uh, you download it, it and then and send, it. send it over. Right. And I just I have a sort of a template of price, earnest money, inspection, you know, the main terms that I just fill in with that offer's information. I didn't I honestly like I'm listening to you guys and I'm like, oh my God. What constitutes a presented offer? I guess well, that was my interpretation of that. Conference? Yeah, I don't know. She's she's in a meeting. Well, I won't answer. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was going to bring her in. Oh, uh, she's in. Not. My thought is when I do it, I do it just so we have a timestamp. This offer was presented so that they can go through. Because a lot of times clients are like sellers, who put in first? Because like you know, some people will. It's calling for highest and best by five o'clock on Sunday. We're gonna sleep on it for three nights, right? Yeah. So my sellers are like, <coughs> they like to see who came in first, yeah. who that saw it and yes. wrote. And I tell my buyers that all the time too. Yeah. Like they're. 
it says something to a seller when you were like, I love it, let's do it, yeah. instead of we need to think about it, we're gonna yeah. sleep on it, we're gonna come right. back for two more showings because offers are.